Well, if you're joining us here today on the, uh, on the broadcast, you're more than welcome. And this week, we're on series two of Pastor Ian's preaching about Lift Jesus High. If you're here with us at Destiny, get your ears open ready, get your hearts open ready, because Pastor Ian is here to speak to us. Lift Jesus High, and it's number two in his series. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Last, last week, we started part one with lift up Jesus. We saw how the word lift up is the biblical word exalt. We saw how that exalt means to put Jesus in the preeminent place, bigger than. So if you remember that bigger than, say this with me, bigger than. Yeah. It's putting Jesus bigger than any problem that you've got. That's what it means to lift up Jesus bigger than your past, bigger than the fear, the bigger than the future, bigger than. Exalt is just means put him bigger than. Things get bigger than, don't they? But we've got to put Jesus back in his rightful place. We said there was going to be three parts. Last week we looked at lifting up Jesus our Savior, bigger than our sin, bigger than our failure, bigger than our past, bigger than the thing that we thought was going to rob us from our relationship with God. But God was bigger than that and he came out to be our Savior. Hallelujah. And we're redeemed. If you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. Amen. This week we said that we were going to lift up Jesus, the promise keeper. <clears throat> and so that is all about, and, and you're going to hear it in the next few minutes, the fact that he's bigger than all of the needs that you'll ever need because he promised. He who promised is what? Faith. Say it again. Faith. He who promised is? Faith. And next week we're going to lift up Jesus, the sovereign Lord. We're going to lift him up just because he's Lord. There's just a time, isn't there, to worship God just because just because he's Lord. And that's gonna, that ties in really neatly with next Saturday, which is going to be a praise party. So we're going to come and boogie for Jesus on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're going to find out the reason why we did that. Blessing the Lord at all times. And his praise is going to be continually in our mouth because God is an awesome God. Now turn with me to Psalm 23. And we're going to read Psalm 23 together as we come and look at this verse. So Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is is. Not maybe, was, or will be, is. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Why? Because we lift up Jesus, the promise keeper. You don't need to lack anything because the promise keeper said, I will meet all your needs according to his riches which are in Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And then it says this, he makes me. In other words, he leads me, he guides me, he's in control of my life. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes we think he takes us in rocky ways. But I want to tell you something, when you trust him, when you lift up Jesus in your life, when you go to where he wants you to go, included in that journey, there will be green pastures. What happens in green pastures? We get ourselves restored and things happen for us and refreshed. And then it says, he leaves me beside quiet waters. I know that during the holiday season and the kids are home and or whatever else, it can feel like that we're living in a war zone. You know, it's like a crazy world in which we're living. How many of you really love watching the news just right now? You know, I mean, you turn the news on at nine and it's like, oh yeah, that's really good news. On at 10, that's really good news. On at 11, no, it's really good news. Now, it isn't really good news, is it? There's all sorts of uncertainty and chaos going around, not just in, in Britain, but in, in many parts of the world. There's chaos and confusion going on in the world in which we live, but in the heart of every believer, when you lift up Jesus, this is what will happen. He will lead you beside still waters, and you'll say, it is well with my soul. It says that he refreshes our soul. We get tired. We all of us get tired and that refreshing comes. You know, it's great to lift up Jesus who is committed to refreshing you. Sometimes people get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, I want to tell you, when you lift up Jesus, He will refresh, restore your soul. So in the middle of the chaos of everything that's happening in the world, you'll say, no, He restores my soul. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path. Lift up the one who knows the journey before you get there. That's really interesting, isn't it? These days, we've all learned to trust Tom Tom, haven't we? Or this little woman in our dashboard of your car. How many of you disagree with her quite often? Why is it that all, all Tom Toms are a woman? It's because, gentlemen, you've been used to, programmed to listen to your wife. 
So, you know, the women are very important in our lives when they say, turn left. And, and if you're very used to saying to your wife, no, you will speak to the dashboard of your car and say, no, I know better. But I, I've learned this, that even if I disagree with my dashboard, she still gets me there in the end. And I want to tell you something, you know, God will lead you. He will guide you. It's important to listen to the voice of God. He guides us along the, the right path. You can make decisions we all make decisions, but whether it's right or not, that's a different thing. And God, but God wants to lead you by the right path, because He's got a plan for you. And why? For His name's sake. There's something at issue here. It's not just about your comfort. It's not just about my comfort. It's for His name's sake. When we look at that verse, you know, we're blessed, hallelujah, for His name's sake. We're in the right place at the right time with the right people for His name's sake. In the end, the whole lot of this, this church, all that's happened over these last few years with the incredible growth that we've seen and all the rest of it, it's not for our namesake, it's for His namesake. When you live and you, you are blessed and you move around in the world and you lift up Jesus, we're doing it for His namesake. Let's live for His namesake. When you go to work and you work well, it's for His namesake. When you get commended by your boss, it's for his name's sake. When you're enjoying life with your wife or your husband, it's for his name's sake. When you're raising your children for the glory of God, it's for his name's sake. Let's live for the glory of God. Lift up Jesus. Amen. You know, I mean, there's stuff being lifted up in the world right now that is big, but we're going to lift up Jesus for his name's sake. Okay. Uh, sometimes we walk through the valley the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death. Well, that's okay. Let's get real, huh? How many of you know, like me, that actually sometimes we have difficult times? We, we, hit, we, we hit it. You know, it's like we hit the wall. It's like tough. We hit tough times mentally. We hit tough times emotionally. We hit tough times financially. We hit tough, tough times relationally. We hit tough times where everything doesn't work out like the dream that we had, like we think it should. Not even tough times like the Bible says that it, it should work out. You know, we read all these verses in the Bible and say, it shouldn't be like this. But the truth of it is, it isn't going to be like that forever. But we do go through. Say we're through. What does through mean? It means through, and you come out the other end. We go through a valley of the shadow of death. You go through difficult times. You go through bereavement. You go through, you know, disappointment. You go through dis discouragement. You go through. You only go through, however, if you're going to trust that you're going to come through. I've seen people go into and stay stuck, and they're living in a valley. If you think you're living in the valley and you've been there too long, it's time to start thinking about through. It's rather than saying, I'm here and I'm here to stay, you're going to need to, to introduce one word into your heart and into your mind, into your thinking. It's the word through. The word through. We're going to come through this. Whatever you're going through right now, you're going to come through it. You're going to come through it if you understand that His rod and His staff are there to comfort you and bring you through it, and you're going to lift up Jesus even in the middle of the valley. You're going to come through. You know, when somebody looks at your life and you might be in a difficult time right now, you know, and they say to you, oh, shame for you. You need to learn how to say to them, well, yes, it might not be going good for, my, for me right now, but I'm coming through. You know, you might be in a difficult time financially, but don't let somebody just, just show you pity and all the rest of it. Say, it might be tough right now, but I'm coming through. You might have had a difficult time in your physical body or your emotional or your mental time. See, it might be tough right now, but I'm coming through. This isn't the end of me. I'm coming through. Hallelujah. Go on, say that out loud. I'm coming through. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming through. Whatever you're in right now, I'm coming through. I'm coming through. I'm not staying where I am. I'm coming through. I'm going to lift up Jesus, the promise keeper, because I'm coming through. It's tough right now, but I'm coming through. The Bible tells us that the darkness of the night doesn't last forever. But joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. And God wants to give you a joyful morning moment. But you will only appreciate the joyful morning moment when you've understood what it is to come through the night. So if you're in the night moment right now, you, you keep telling yourself, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming through. And lift up the one who said, you will lack nothing. And in the middle of it, don't fear. Don't fear evil. That's what the verse says in Psalm 23. Don't fear evil. Why? Because He's with you. 
God is with you. Never leave you, never forsake you. You know, sometimes we live our lives and we walk in the go, I'm all alone. You know, nothing's going to happen to me. Well, I want to tell you, you are not alone. He said, I will never leave. Don't you talk about you being alone when God said he's going to be with you. Because when you say, oh, I'm all alone in the middle of this, God says, no, you're not. Open your eyes. Because if you'll only open your eyes and open your heart, you'll realize God is with you. He's there supporting you guiding you, providing for you, protecting you, being with you at all times in every step of the journey because you're coming through. The devil thought he got you stuck there. The devil had dug a big hole and said, jump down there, stay down there, and I'm going to shovel the dirt on the top of you. But we said, no, I'm not going to stay in that hole. I'm coming through. Hallelujah. Do you remember Joseph's brothers put him in a hole like that, and they thought it was the end of him? But God had another plan for him. Maybe something has happened in your life, in your experience, and, and you thought, no, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a hole. I'm stuck down a hole. Well, listen, I've got a word from God for you today. Get out of your hole. You're coming through. The sun is coming up on a new day for you. All you've got to do even when you're in the hole is lift up Jesus. He is with you. His rod and His staff, they comfort you. And goodness of mercy. Oh, le bonheur et la gracia m'accompagneront tous les jours de ma vie, vie pour atelier et moi. Hallelujah. That's for our French-speaking people here. <laughs> my pastor. Oh. Le bonheur, le, the good hours, the good days. My companion, they're, they're my companion. Tous les jours, to every day. Of my vie, my, my life. Pour toujours. Oh, for all the days. And you've heard me speak it before, you know, that it says goodness and mercy, follow me. The word follow there is not just, you know, reluctantly following behind us. The word there is the word that is only really used the rest of the Bible as being an enemy who's chasing after you. And it uses it to make a play on words here, and it's saying, goodness and mercy are chasing after you every day of your life. And they're going to get you. Why? Because he, God is determined to bring you through. That's why in the middle of the tough times of your life, lift him up. Lift Jesus up because he is the promise keeper. The Bible tells us very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 that the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. You know, you read the Bible sometimes and you say, I wonder whether that means me. Yes, it means you. I wonder whether God has bypassed me. No. The promise is for you. It's an issue of covenant. So let's go back just for a, for a moment into the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament, who, by the way, is the sole God of the New Testament, who is the God of 2019, the God who made the promises, never made a promise that he doesn't intend to keep. He never made a promise that is like, uh, oh, well, no, no, that's, that's for B.C., but now this is A.D., uh, and, it, you know, this is now 2019, and we know much better. Well, I want to tell you, he knew much better throughout the whole time, and he made those promises, and it's called covenant. Now, the word covenant is this. God makes an agreement with us, and he signed it with his own blood. He signed the covenant and said, heaven and earth, that's Bible, will pass away. But my word, my covenant, my promises will not pass away. So the promises of the Bible are yes and amen concerning you. God will never change his mind. That's why you can lift up Jesus, the promise keeper. Hallelujah. The Bible says ask and seek and knock. Why? Because when you ask, he's not going to say no. When you seek, he's not going to play hide and seek. You know I. I watch my grandchildren sometimes playing hide and seek, and they, and they find the most amazing places in my house. And after half an hour, we're still trying to find them. And then you find them in the back of some wardrobe somewhere, and, and they were not, never going to be found, ever, quietly. You know, and the other kids are now, we're all starting to get worried now. Where, where are they? Where are they? Well, God's not like that. When you seek Him, He will be found by you. That's what the Bible says. If you draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. That's what the Bible says. All that He wants you to do is seek Him. Rather than living your life saying, do you know what? I'm going to work this out on my own. You know, I'm going to do this absolutely alone. 
Rather than saying, no, this is my walk. I'm going to sort it out. I got myself into the mess. This mess, I'm going to get myself out of this mess. The Bible encourages to ask. Ask, oh God, would you help me? Yes. Lord, I'm, I'm seeking your way. I'm, I'm seeking your wisdom. I'm seeking you. Uh, yes, draw near to me and I'll find you. And then you know what happens? Knock. And guess what happens when you knock? The door that you thought was closed to you will open. The future that you thought that, you'd, that was no longer yours because you failed will open. The situation that you've read some verses in the Bible about, but you thought, no, this is not going to work for me. It's going to open. Because God says that He does not want to withhold His blessings from you because of an issue of covenant. The covenant of God is, the promises, the Bible says, are yes and are men to those that believe. When you lift up Jesus, you start to believe more. You know, when you lift up Jesus in the middle of all of your troubles, you start to believe more. Why? Because when you stop looking at your problem and you look at the problem solver, when you stop looking at the failure, but you start to look at the one who can bring you through, when you stop looking at your past or you stop looking at that person who robbed you of all your joy, well, listen, take your eyes off that person and start to look at that person who is the joy giver, who is the peace giver, who is the one who said, I've come so you can have a miserable life. No, that's the reversed version. The real version says this, I've come so that you can have life in all of its fullness, de not dependent on us living that perfect life, but dependent on His grace and His goodness. Not dependent on us having sorted it, sorted it, sorted it, sorted it, but because He sorted it once and for all. Now, of course, there's a responsibility on us to be good disciples of Jesus Christ and to live to please Him. But the key of grace is this, that actually we come to Him we're just as we are. And we say, oh God, I'm in a valley moment, and I'm asking, and I'm seeking, and I'm knocking. And He opens the door to us, and we're lifting up the promise keeper. Hallelujah. What a great God He is. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 says He goes before you. Then it says He will be with you. And then it says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And then finally in that verse it says this, don't, don't be afraid. If only we could get hold of that. Huh? Because we worry about our past and we think God's in, not in our present. Well, God was in your past. He's in your present. He's in your future. And He's saying, I'm going to watch over you. This is Bible, ladies and gentlemen. This is simple gospel. Because the gospel is good news. And this all happened because of covenant. You know, and the covenant isn't just God promising. I want to tell you something. He died on a cross for your covenant. You know, we break bread here very, very often. and It's available every single Sunday. At the end of the service, you can come and do that as well if you wish. And when, when we look at taking bread and drinking wine, we're remembering the one who gave his life so we can have life. We're looking at the one who died to give us eternal life. We're looking at the one who signed the covenant. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new covenant. And we do this how often? Until he comes. So until Jesus comes again, whenever you take the bread and the wine, and you, you, are, you are lifting up Jesus, the covenant keeper. You are lifting up Jesus, the promise keeper. Which is why we, when you take bread and you take wine, you can say, Lord, thank you for my salvation. That was last week. And today you can say, Lord, thank you for my blessings for the provision of health and strength and for long life and all of these things. Why? Because in the covenant, there is all that you will ever need for life and godliness. Hallelujah. That's the great God that He is. The Bible says this in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, that our God will meet all of your needs according to Christ Jesus. I mean, He's going to meet it. Hallelujah. That's the God that He is. Oh, and by the way, the next time that you have a problem and you go to God, God's not going to say, oh, oh no, what am I going to do now? He says, knew that was coming up, provided for that. Yeah? And, and then you fail, and you come down to God and say, oh God, I'm sorry. He says, knew that was coming up, provided for that. And now we're faced with a new challenge, and he said, knew that was coming up, provided for that. I want to tell you, whatever you face, God knew it was coming up, and he's provided for it. All your needs are already met because of the provision of God's goodness and grace. Oh, what a great God He is. You know, there are just a number of 
names, we call them, the names of God. And, and there's, there's about 20 or so in, in, in the Bible and more. I'm just going to select four or four for you right now, and we're going we're to shine them up for you. About, it talks about Jehovah. Jehovah, and the first one we're going to look at is Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. You know, if you're going to lift up the promise keeper, what promise are we looking at in Jehovah Rapha? The Lord that heals. Right now, if you're sick, lift up the promise keeper that he is the Lord that heals you. If you're sick, don't just worry about it. If you've been given some bad news by the doctor, don't just worry about it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Have faith, have faith, lift up Jesus and declare that he is, he is your Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. What are you going to lift up? The problem of illness or are you going to lift up the healer? Jehovah Rapha. Learn the name Jehovah Rapha and declare it. Put it into your prayer every day. If you're sick or you know somebody that's sick, say, oh, I'm declaring, I'm lifting up Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is our healer. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? What, what next? Let's have a look at the next one. The next one is this, Jehovah Shammah. What does Shammah mean? It means the Lord is there. I'm all alone. No, he's not. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's there. Wherever you go to on your journey, he's, he's there. I, I mean, the Bible says even if you go to hell, he's there, you know. I mean, I mean he's just trying to make a picture. No matter where you go, he is there. Because he said, I'll be there. I'll be with you. He's not coming. He's there. He's not leaving. He's, he's there. He is omnipresently there. He's there with you right now. When you go to work tomorrow, he's, he's there. When you go home today, he's there. When you're trying to go to sleep tonight, he's there. When you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he's there. When the bill arrives in the post tomorrow, he's there. When you're sitting in the doctor's surgery and he says something you didn't want to hear, guess who's? He's there. He's there. He's there the whole time. So why would we fear? Don't lift up fear because he's, he's there. He's there with you. He is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there. I'm only selecting four of these. We could have gone through the whole thing and I'd have loved to it. In fact, when I studied it, I did. And then I said, no, I don't get long. So number three is this, Jehovah Jireh. Oh, we all like this one, don't we? Uh, the Lord is my provider. The Lord will provide. Now, the context of this, is, it, it was a particular situation of providing a sacrifice. But, you know, the Lord will provide for everything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because he is Jehovah Jireh. You might be facing a bill right now, Jehovah Jireh. Don't lift up the fear of the, of the finance. Lift up the faith of the God who promised. Lift up the promise keeper who said, I will meet all of your needs. And if you've had your needs met this last week or the last month, make sure that you're one of those people that come back and say, oh, look what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Be a, you know, don't, don't just, you know, I was miserable before. Now God's meet my needs. But actually, I've got a miserable persona. Let's get rid of the miserable persona. And let's put on a, a garment of praise and a thanksgiving. Because the Lord has been good to us. And if you've been blessed, 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 blessed here, don't be afraid to share and a testimony about your, the goodness of the Lord to you. You know, when uh, Joseph had his coat from his father, he didn't wrap it up and put it in the wardrobe and say, I don't wear that because people think I'm being blessed. No, he put his coat on, and he wore his blessings with great. Okay, it got him into trouble with his so-called brothers, but who's care who cares about so-called brothers? You enjoy your blessings. Why? Because he's a promise keeper who promised to provide for you, and when God provides for you, whatever it is. You know, I've seen God provide for you know, the hundreds of people that are here Sunday by Sunday. God's provided cars. Some of you have had free cars given to you. Hallelujah. We're driving in and we park it down the street somewhere so nobody knows. You know, God has provided holidays. Somebody said to me a little while ago, do you know what? Somebody's just come to me and, and given me a free holiday. Well, hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh. Some, somebody has been pr provided with, with the right home or they've been provided with a, with a bed or a three-piece suite or a fridge or a freezer or, a, you know, all sorts of things. You know, in my life, I've been provided several times with the keys of a car. 
I remember right, right at the very beginning of my ministry, way, way back in 1973, I remember in the very first church that I ever went to be a pastor of, and I, you know, I was earning four pounds a week. That's what it was. Everybody else was earning five. But I earned, but no, everybody else was earning a lot more than that. Four pounds a week, and I couldn't hardly afford to do anything. And somebody came up to me at the end of a church service and gave me, we used to call it a Pentecostal handshake. How many of you know what one of them is? Yeah, we've got a guy here who's a pastor, was a pastor of an Elan church in Hollyhead. Welcome. We're really glad to see you today, and you'll know what this means. But somebody shook me by the hand, and, uh, and, I, and when the hand was released, there was a, there was a car key there. And I, and I went, what's this? And they said, it's my car outside, it's yours. And I went, oh, <laughs> hallelujah. And what, what do we do, Jehovah Jireh, you know? You, you couldn't hide it because it was a 12-seater minibus. <laughs> and uh, a bed for dormobile with sliding doors, yeah, with little leather things here. And you drive around with the doors all slid, slid. My wife learned to drive in one of them, Yeah. That's another story. Oh, I've got some stories I could tell you about that. I just looked at the clock. I haven't got time. And I looked at her face. I definitely haven't got time. But there you go. This is, you, you know, God is a great provider. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your car. Enjoy, enjoy the blessing. God gave you a job. Enjoy it. God gave you your neighbors who've been kind to you. Enjoy them. Thank the Lord for all of the blessings. Every provision isn't just because you've, you've got a kind friend. I want to tell you something. God organized for that kind friend to be a channel through whom he can bring a blessing to you. And he got it from where he is to where you are. And what we've got to make sure now is the blessing doesn't stop with us. We've got to take that blessing and let it flow. We've got to let it go. If somebody said this, and I really like it. If God can't get it through you, he's not going to give it to you. Do you get that? If God can't get it through you, He's not going to get it to you. You know, and there's been sometimes when people have sat in our office and they've talked to Rachel and me and they talk about, well, this whole thing, you know, isn't working, giving generosity tithes, and offering isn't working. And it's like, ooh, you know what? It works every time. When you put it together like God intended it to put together, lift up Jesus. Lift up the one who is the promise keeper. He is Jehovah Jireh. And lastly, this, this is the last one for this morning. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord who is our peace. Whatever you're going through right now, God wants you to be in peace. You might have had a disappointment. Jehovah Shalom. You might have had a discouragement. You might have had a setback. You could worry the anxiety. You know, the anxiety. Well, let God be your Shalom. Lift up the promise keeper who said in the middle of the storm, I'm going to give you peace. Who, when the angels came to announce him, talked about peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. I want to speak a word of peace over you and all those people that are watching us on the broadcast in many countries around the world right now. God is, wants to be your Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace giver. He is the peacemaker. He's the peace. You can be in the storm, but in peace. You can be in the middle of all the chaos that's happening around the world and be at peace. You just need to declare him to be your Jehovah Shalom. We need to do that as well, don't we? In your marriage, in the situations that are going on, Jehovah Shalom. In all the worry that comes in, your, in the night, Jehovah Shalom. You know, somebody else might be Treating you real bad, uh, but he's always going to treat you real good. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you can have peace even before he or she gets sorted out. You can have the Jehovah Shalom in your life. Lift up Jesus higher than your past. Lift him up higher than your problems. Lift him up higher than your failures. Lift him up higher than who you think you are. Lift him up higher than your sickness. Lift him up higher than your fear. Lift him up higher than your discouragement, than your disappointment. Lift him up higher. We've got to exalt the Lord our God and bless his name and say, you are our Jehovah Jireh. That's just four of the names of God that we lift up and we say, you are our great provider. You are a covenant keeper. You are the God who is with us, who will never fail us, who will never leave us, because he's such a great God, isn't he? Oh, hallelujah. Now, you know, there's people here 
Maybe you don't know Jesus. It's time to put him in your life, right at the center of your life. It's time to come to a place of faith. It's time to come to a place where you say, Jesus, I'm going to give my life to you. Why wouldn't you want to give your life to a Savior? Why wouldn't you want to give your life to a promise keeper? Why wouldn't you want to give your life to the King of kings and Lord of lords? And, it's, and it's, it comes in a simple moment when you pray, pray a prayer that says, God, I want to get to know you. I'm giving my life to you, and I want to thank Jesus for dying for me on a cross. And I'm going to make a first step. Some of you are going to make that first step today. You're going to make a decision. Maybe you've known about it in the past, but you've never really done it. Well, it's worth doing it. I recommend it. The Bible is full of it. God's waiting there for you to come to him. You could do it. You could do it today. For some of you, you've been lifting up your fear, lifting up your anxiety, lifting up your problems and your disappointments, lifting up all of the the reasons why it's not going to go right for you. Well, you need to lift up the reason why it is going to go well for you. It is well with your soul because of Jesus. And it's time to lift up Jesus. Hmm. Lift him up. Will you do it right now? I want to ask you to stand with me just for a moment. Right where you are, I just want you to tell God, give to him your biggest concern. Give it to him right now. And just say to God, God, I'm giving you my anxiety. Will you, t- will you give it to him? Give him to your worry. Give him to your concerns. Just give it to him. We're not going to move just for a moment. We're just going to take this moment. This is a very important moment. Just give it to him. You can tell him, Lord, I failed. But I'm going to give to you my failure right now. Say, Lord, I secret things that have been going on and Lord I give them to you just give it to God why don't you ask God to forgive you this is the time to pray that prayer and say Lord I want you to become my savior I want to become a Christian today Why don't you give to God the anxiety that you've got about your future? You might have been saying, oh, what about my future? Where am I going? Or how is it going to work out? Well, put your life in God's hands right now. Say, God, I'm trusting you as my promise keeper. It's time to lift up Jesus. I will come into your presence, Lord. Sing it with me if you know it. With a sacrifice of praise. With a song I will exalt you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. I will give Exalt his holy name, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, exalt his holy name. Come on, sing it. Lift him up, his name be lifted higher, lift him up, exalt his holy name, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, exalt his holy name. Sing it again. Oh, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, lift him up, exalt his holy name, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, exalt his holy name. Lord, right
right now, we want to lift you up. Come on, saints, let's just lift him up in your praise right now. Just, just begin to bless the Lord. and You can begin to say, Lord, thank you for my healing. Thank you for my blessings. Thank you for my deliverance. Thank you, you're bringing me through. Hallelujah. You're not stuck. He's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. All of his blessings are yes and amen. All of his blessings, all of his promises, they are for you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Exalt his holy name, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, exalt his holy name. I will give you all the glory, you delivered me from shame, I'm created in your righteousness, blessed be your holy name. Exalt his holy name, lift him up, his name be lifted higher, exalt his holy name. Lift him up, 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 lift up the name of up the name we lift up the name lift him up his name be lifted higher lift him up his name be lifted higher lift him up be lifted higher exalt his holy name do it all week do it all day do it for the rest of your life Lift him up. Remember, he's a God of covenant. He's the promise keeper. You're not alone. You never need to fear because he who promised is faithful. Come on, you can come and take bread now if you wish to. And then there's some free refreshments at the end. Thank you for being at Destiny. It was good when we said, let us go to the house of the Lord. God bless you.